ladies and ghouls, welcome to the Cinema Grotesque. I am your host, Travis McKeithen, along with... Hey, Anderson. Hey, we've got something special today. We've got something special every week, but oh my goodness, do we have something special today. This was my recommendation, so I will stand, I, I will take all the blame for this one, because I absolutely adore this film. It has it has some things going for it. It has other things not going for it. <laughs> and of course, with that, we're actually talking about the 1983 film called Joysticks, um, starring uh, Joe Don Baker and, well, you hadn't heard of him, but you haven't heard of anybody else in this movie either. But uh, we'll get into that more a little bit later. Uh, directed by Graydon Clark, which he hasn't done much either. Um it's a movie about breast and arcades. That's all you need to know. But we're gonna go a little bit. Yeah, you know how, how 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 you know how the movie Zapped is is about uh, tits and science. Oh yeah. Or or the movie Weird Science is about tits and science. Mm-hmm. This is that, but tits and video games. Exactly, I and mean, not any video games, but classic retro. Well, it wasn't retro at the time, but fucking arcade machine cabinets, arcades. My childhood, my lovely childhood. Like, not not the cool like '90s arcades, which were looked a lot better than anything else. This was '80s arcade, which was just you know, Pac-Man and uh, Space Invaders and shit. And a lot of others that we'll be talking about here shortly. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. They will. But, yeah, this was your first time watching it. Uh, Eagle, uh, let's just, uh, what did you think going into this movie? What, the, out of the little bit that you knew about it, what were uh, your initial thoughts? My initial thought was, okay, it's like a sex comedy set in a video arcade. So there are certain things I want to see. I didn't get to see any of them. Oh. I was like, okay, so you've got to have a couple banging on an arcade cabinet. Eh, Doesn't happen. It's difficult. <laughs> I mean, you know, just recreate that scene where, where the girl is raped on a pinball machine, but just consensual this time and an Preferably. arcade. Yeah, and well, let's yeah, let's hope it keeps that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, so I also thought, like, it would be funny if they would build like if a guy would sit down in a chair and they would build an arcade cabinet and then his penis was an actual joystick <laughs> you were that th that didn't happen this had a limited budget <laughs> and they couldn't put that uh, much it, in. It, <laughs> it doesn't cost a lot to get some plywood and fucking make a shitty arcade cabinet like you don't have to put any of the computer parts in that it's just wood <laughs> Well, somebody could have got a splinter on their dick, and that could have been a lawsuit. It's best they didn't, in my opinion. <laughs> but no, without further oh, ado, let's get to the goddamn movie. I, I, I'm excited about this. Let's uh, let's uh, let's start it up. Go, what you got, man? So yeah, uh, the movie just opens with with a credit sequence that is like just titles, then like a camera pointed at various arcade cabinet screens, mixed. Uh, so yeah, it's it's shooting like random video games. Like pole position was one I recognized. Uh, Pac-Man and a couple of others, and that is interspersed with the most '80s California chick, <laughs> like playing the arcade machine, and just like the camera just pretty much has its way with her. Yeah, like it it it, it leers on her. Holding and violently jerking off the uh, joystick. <laughs> this movie, and then it's the... <laughs> just, then it's just cuts to an ass for like four <laughs> seconds, and like this, this camera wants to fuck this woman. <laughs> this movie, I mean, within five, this is all within five seconds. I mean, this is literally just five seconds of the movie after it fade to bl from black, and uh, this made me know within the first five seconds. I'm going to love this movie <laughs> uh, because it was, it was tits, ass, video, multiple video games and a woman bouncing while she's playing said video games for no apparent reason. Like she's very bouncy while playing the, the, a video game. I have never seen a person be that just bouncing all over the place while playing a video game, unless they are like four years old. 
You should watch me play Super Meat Boy. I'm kind of just like that. My tits aren't <laughs> quite as nice, but I'm working on it. I'll assure you. I'll, uh, I'll let you know when they get a little bit larger. So this is accompanied by the title song, appropriately named Joysticks. Oh. But the, t- the lyrics are just a euphemism for masturbation. Uh, or jerking somebody off. Yeah, one way or another. Yeah, about, about hand, hand pleasuring a penis. Yep. <laughs> so it's like... Uh, like jerk it up, <laughs> shoot straight, <laughs> and like this is like this sounds like the worst Kenny Lockings impersonator doing the song. Like this is like what it's like Danger Zone if Danger Zone was written by Steven Tyler. But the only thing you have to say is that this song contains the lyrics totally awesome video game hold on hold it games and uh, that's all you yeah, need to know about the whole goddamn song and movie oddly yeah enough. it's like it's like think of think of like any terrible Kenny Loggins uh, <laughs> theme song from from the 80s and 90s and it's basically that but kind of shit but kind of amazing because of the lyric Totally awesome video game. And if you want to enjoy that, we're actually going to throw that at the end of the podcast. It's an amazing song. You have to hear it too, but to leave it. But Eagle, this brings up my first point is I miss this. And what it, I miss a movie having its own song, a song specifically yeah, made you don't, for yeah, that you don't movie. Get, it fucking yeah, never you don't happens get, anymore. Yeah, it's like you had it like like farthest into the far into the nineties with like Batman and Robin mm-hmm. like having their own songs and but then just it just kind of vanished. Well it probably vanished with the uh with the demise of, of MTV as a music video station and not just garbage real reality programming. Yeah, I mean, that's probably a bit of it, definitely. But, I mean, the whole thing is, I mean, obviously there are soundtracks created, uh, orchestral soundtracks created for some movies, even now, of course. But I'm talking about pop songs that are specifically talking about the plot of the movie. I yeah, you had a, so lot, a lot when, and, and like, the idea was, well, we can play it on MTV and all the kids watch MTV and then they want to see the movie. Exactly. Because the whole thing is that's pretty it was pretty much an advertisement for the movie because they were like, come now, watch the show. It's about shit blowing up. I mean, I'm obviously stealing the tune from uh, Joysticks, but it, that is exactly how it was. I mean, there's so many movies from the 80s and as you said, from the early 90s that really did just take advantage of that. It was absolutely it was just fun because whenever that soundtrack came on, it was usually during a montage or during something silly. And you're like, yeah, that's, they're talking about the movie. Now they're talking about the hero. That's fucking awesome. Uh, Hollywood like, do that. Could again. you imagine, could you imagine Rocky two without, or was it Rocky three? I don't know which one, but can you imagine the Rocky without the eye of the tiger? Oh, that was two, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was two. Exactly. I mean that as well as uh, there was a, a couple songs made for four, um, I'm pretty sure there was probably something specifically made for three, but I can't remember right off hand. I'd have to look it up, but yeah, absolutely amazing. It's explaining what's happening in the movie or what the inner dialogue of a character is. And it's just, it's fucking beautiful. It's like old, uh, show tunes, like musical stage musicals where they're explaining what's happening instead of actually showing it on or, uh, verbalizing it on screen. And I adore that. Well, uh, like the last, uh, last example of that, but which was kind of accidental, was Night Call by Kavinsky for Drive. Okay. I actually see that, that, you know, that song was a relative unknown before that movie. Then it was in that movie, and everybody associated those two things, and it reminded me a lot of the uh, licensed soundtrack thing, hmm. where they would do, like, music videos based around the aesthetics of the movie. And I said, if nothing else, bring that back. Uh, if nothing else, with the popularity of like Kung Fury and a few other movies that are essentially yeah, that's parody. yeah, that's a very like deliberate example of that. Exactly, and I love that that's coming back. I am totally excited. I hope they do it well. I mean. Ah, uh, fuck it. We're we're going too far off track. Let's go back to the movie. So we get past the opening credits. What happens then, Eagle? So like we are introduced to. 
I don't know if he's our main character or not. This movie is kind of doesn't know who its main character is. For some, like, for the beginning, it's this, like, terrible, terrible stereotype <laughs> of a geek or a nerd. It's like people say that a Big, black, a big Bang Theory is basically nerd blackface. Yeah. This is that turned up to 11. Well, this was the 80s. Uh, the 80s was not very known for su uh, being subtle about things. It was literally, if you have a character trait, we're going to bash that into the audience's face until they get that. So, of course, uh, our main character, Eugene, he's he's got the sweater vest. He's got the glasses. He's kind of got the uh, slick back curly hair. He is your atypical nerd. And, well, like, uh, yeah, and you know, like he's driving his car... And and he's singing Camp Town Lady, sing this song. Do da do da. Uh, <laughs> like if he was any more of a geek stereotype, then he would have a premature ejaculation because two chicks roll up next to him and start to talk to him. Yep. Like the only thing was missing was like oh, girls talking. <laughs> And something tells me that was probably left on the editing room floor. There, it did seem... Well, I mean, he he then later gets a, a premature ejaculation when they show them their tits out of the fucking blue. Yeah, that, that's the thing that's lovely. If you look at the scene deeply, um, Eugene's not even pulled off on the side of the road. He's still in the lane, and this is a two-lane road. So the ladies just drive up beside him, totally blocking all of traffic. And, uh, yeah, they just decide to uh, get his attention. And, yeah, needless to say, um, he, he's very busy because, obviously, today is his first day of work. I don't know where he could possibly be working in a movie about an arcade, but it is his first day of work. And so they decide to get his attention. How else do you get a nerd's attention but to show your tits? Um, four, uh, two sets of tits, four, uh, four breasts specifically is how you get a nerd. Let's, attention. let's get the math right. Exactly. I mean, it's, it, it really is science guys. Uh, so, yeah. So it turns out like they're doing some bullshit for a sorority pledge, which involves getting a picture of, of, uh, of a nerd in their underwear. Mm -hmm. And of course the best way to do that is to promise them sex and then not follow through. Of course. Uh, cock teasing as so, it's known in the business. Yeah, so like they, they like show him their tits and like, yeah, we want to have you. And he's like, <laughs> right here? Yes, right here, in the back seat, now. And he sort of lamely crawls over and they start making out and it's very awkward because he's a huge geek. And then just comes the line which, uh, with she, the one who's, who's he, he's making out with says, you've got to show me your manhood. <laughs> now, I don't care if, if B. Arthur herself would say that to me, but at that point in the transaction, I'm fucking out. See, that's, I'm not that, that, showing anybody my manhood. I'm uh, I'm actually the opposite there. <laughs> you would ha you wouldn't even have to do that much, and I'd have my cock out saying what you want to do. You want a party? Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would get my cock out, no problem. Just don't say the words. You've got to show me your manhood. Don't call <laughs> my penis manhood. Eh, you know, it was the eighties. We they, they didn't quite work out all the interesting names for dicks yet. So you know, like I, show me your cock. <laughs> I'll give him a pull pass out on that, that one. cock. Show me that dick. <laughs> so he's like, okay, I'll show you my binky, mm -hmm. and he stands up and and pulls down and like starts to undo his belt and like shit. And he's like, ladies, I would like to introduce you to. Simba. <laughs> and he calls his penis Simba. And do be aware, this was before the Lion King, so they were actually yes. really before their time here. <laughs> so, like, and like, the only thing I could think about was like doing the Lion King to a chick. Ooh, that could be fun. I'm gonna have to write that down. See, in my like, book that's when that's when you're fucking. Yeah, that's when you're fucking someone. And then you come and you come outside them, like on the on the ass, preferably from behind. Then you just take your thumb and just smear it around in it. And then she turns around and you just wipe your thumb across her forehead and go, Simba. <laughs> oh, I'd have to have the soundtrack on for that. But yeah, that, that, that'll be on the uh, that'll be on the to do list uh, quite literally. So, 
What do you call your penis, Travis? Um, uh, let me see here. It's been known by many names. Beelzebub and Lucifer are one. Uh, no, uh, I would say the mighty midget. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's not PC. The mighty little person. <laughs> that's, that's that's my dick. Mighty little guy. Mighty little Peter Dinklage. Uh, 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 I call mine Gargamel, like the evil wizard in Smurfs. I can see that. Because I was fucking 12 and stupid. <laughs> does it have a hook in it like his nose does? <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of facing. No, it, 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 uh, no it, it's an evil wizard. So I, I named it after an evil wizard. Are one of your balls named Azriel? I need to know. <laughs> or do you just have one ball and that's why it's Azriel? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one's going to be a long one. You might very well think that. You might very well think that. But I couldn't possibly comment. Okay, I understand. We'll wait to uh, we'll wait to another another uh, dick related uh, sh show, which I'm sure we'll have. Yeah, quite a well, few if right. somebody is is naming their balls in a movie, we will get into that. Okay, good. I'll, I'll start writing. So, now. like, he's like, so he's like pulled down his pants and is in like these, like basically just shorts. They aren't even underwear. Like oh, they yeah. get, they go down to his knees. They're like surfer shorts, almost. I mean, what you would imagine yeah. surfers wearing to go out. And with. and the one who, well, the one he isn't making out with, just pulls out like the largest Polaroid camera in existence. It like good. it was the size of a fax machine. <laughs> well, it was. You, the 80s. For, for for those born in the nineties or later, think the size of a mini fridge. Yeah, that's about right. And. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. No uh, so, and she only takes a picture of his underwear. She doesn't even get the cock. Yeah, that was what kind like, of got me off a little bit. Because the whole thing is, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of sex comedies from the 80s, which I don't think I've ever seen a dick in any of them. So, because, I mean, these were made specifically Well, at for... least, like, yeah, you don't have to actually show the dick. You just have to allude to it. I mean, like, you have to get a picture of a guy in his underwear. That's some fucking lame ass sorority bullshit. Yeah, nowadays they're killing people and doing drugs, so times have changed since <laughs> the eighties. Uh, so, yeah, they just you know take the picture. That's what they were after. So they toss him out of the car and take their pants with them. Oh yeah. And for some reason, he doesn't get back into his car and just drive to the arcade. He sort of attempts to sneak about like it looks like downtown LA in his drawers. Oh, well they actually, they kept his pants, which had his car keys in them. Uh, he was driving the car. Why did he take the keys? <laughs> I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I can't say why, but I do remember specifically, Oh yeah, my keys are in there. Come back. Like, you were driving the car, and like, you 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 killed the engine, took the keys out, so to have to lift your butt up to fit it into your pocket, and then you crawled out of your car. There were chicks there wanting to have sex with you. What the fuck is your problem? Yeah, well, Eugene is a strange sort. We'll definitely uh, get back to him some more here yeah, shortly, so, to say the least. Yeah. So like. We are then, he gets to the arcade and he's in his underwear and everybody's laughing at him because, haha, -ha, underwear. Oh, yeah. Um, and then we are introduced to our other main character, who's, uh, I, I didn't actually ever learn the name of. He's just douchey, douchey white guy to oh, me. Oh, they say it so many times. <laughs> Jefferson Bailey. Jefferson Bailey, uh, yeah. Essentially, okay, Zach so we Morris meet... before Zach Morris. Yeah, basically Zac Efron. <laughs> like, if this was made today and somehow arcades would be a thing, this would be played by Zac Efron. I can see that, for sure. And, uh, yeah, he's like the uh, manager of the arcade. He tricked his grandfather into turning his warehouse into an arcade. For some reason. Because, yes, that seemed like a good idea. Exactly. And... Along with him are the two girls who, who just flashed Eugene. Exactly. And two other girls. One we learn out later is 
playing John Doe Baker's daughter. Exactly. Who has the most and amazing accent in cinema, really. What the fuck is up with that? <laughs> it was, I like felt my ears were bleeding at some point. It, that. Space cadet that you are. It was pretty, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much, uh -huh. you think about, uh, essentially it used to be known as when I was younger, this was the Valley girl, as in the valleys of California girl who are rich and stupid and talk very stupidly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this was pretty much as close to, I mean, every other bad accent of a Valley girl that I think I've ever heard, but a little bit no, more like, high-pitched. This, like this was like a Valley gun accent turned up to 11. <laughs> it's only supposed to go up to 10. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's like, and the, like, at some point, I think she, like, her, her pitch reaches subsonic levels because she's like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there were a few times that I had to turn the volume down because that, that, I mean, that voice, they mic'd her better than anybody else or she was just that fucking loud that she was extremely... I'm, she was just that fucking loud, I bet. <laughs> because, like, yeah, the, like, the treble in that was just too... Like, you you can't handle that shit. <laughs> so, I'm like, I, I couldn't even make out just half of what she was saying because it was just lost in, like leaps of, of just high pitch <laughs> just kind of getting a t uh, tinnitus uh, type of ringing in your ears yeah you're just like on someone blowing a dog whistle <laughs> yeah she's a uh, so, she'll yeah. play a bigger role here shortly um so yeah and uh, yeah so the, like eugene comes in and is like huh, we have your pants but now they're wet <laughs> because yeah. of reasons exactly uh and Eugene just put us on the wet pants and just looks just abjectly fucking miserable. Yeah, and, um, and like, they're, oh, they're wet. And they start like wiping down his pants because <laughs> they are wet. And Eugene comes again when they touch his penis. Pretty much. Plain and simple. And like then after that, like uh, Jefferson Bailey... <laughs> takes the uh, two tit girls and by like I, I I noticed this that these two girls are the only girls who both have dialogue and show their tits uh, you are correct yeah um <laughs> like yeah and that's like pretty weird in a sex movie like you have like all these female characters but no only these two show their tits these were the only ones who we could make sign the contract yeah, I, they they wanted to be stars, Hegel. They really, really wanted to be stars, and all, I mean, uh, they just said, you know what, uh, Mister uh, Mister Graydon Clark, the fine director of this movie, like if you're gonna make it in Hollywood, you gotta show your tits. Uh, We're gonna do bad accents again. We should probably not do that. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. He goes like back in the into the back room with those two. So Eugene is left in charge. Oh, yeah. And, like, it's at this point we are introduced to one of these movies just, <laughs> you know, defining characteristics, which is just random-ass gags, which are just insane. Well, one thing I think we're stepping over, which I think is a really large part, in my, in my opinion, he's possibly one of the most interesting characters in the whole movie, and that would be Mr. Dorfus. Um, he is, uh, the atypical fat guy for the most part. He, uh, well, he, he gets, he gets introduced after all the weird gags where Eugene is trying to like manage and walks up to a monk and the monk is like, ah, the machine, ah, I can't resist it. <laughs> it, it is of the devil. Just, just the, like a crazy person just oh, yeah. verbally assaulting Eugene. And then another crazy person also, like, physically assaults Eugene. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's all, like, all these parts of just these gags, which just go nowhere and don't connect to anything. Yeah, there was somebody doing a, a curly um, in person, impersonation from the Three Stooges for no apparent reason. Um, there's a couple other just strange stereotypes, but those are a little bit later on in the movie. 
So, yeah, so, like, after that, he's, like, a fat guy is playing Pac-Man. A fat, and sweaty, he dirty guy. So we yeah. have our second he's major like... stereotype here, though. Actually, third. Yeah. Our first one being Eugene, yeah, yeah. the atypical nerd. Then we have the Valley Girl, um, who, obviously, she's playing her stereotypical role. And now we have Jonathan Andrew McDorfus, better known as uh, Dorfus. Uh, played by Jim Greenleaf. Don't worry, he's never done anything else. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, I would, I would, I would, uh, I would argue that Jefferson Bailey is like a stereotypical jockey douche. Yeah, pretty much. As I said, putting it in say by the Bell terms, which some people may get this one, some people won't, because I'm old. Uh, you've got uh, Jefferson Bailey as Zach. You have um, Eugene. Uh, as Screech, and I'm not quite sure where Dorfus would fit in. They never really had like a fat, like dirty. He's pretty much Jim Belushi or John Belushi from Animal House. Yeah, that was his character. Yeah, no, all that was. That was like, uh, yeah, you've seen Animal House, just be that, but not as good. Pretty much, yeah. So, and just yeah so we cut back to jefferson bailey and the two girls and they play and they play strip arcade cabinet oh yeah they're playing a strip like they're playing an, an arcade oh yeah they're playing a machine and and they apparently have their own house strip rules <laughs> for a game called streaking exactly and just to which... do a side motion right now um i found that out with a very very kind help of people over at Reddit in the uh, slash Cade uh, forums. Uh, but I spent a good hour before that. I was like, you know what? I think I can do it on my own. I'm going to find this arcade game. I spent almost an entire hour trying to find that out. And come to find out, that game is actually not streaking. It is a streaking retextured. It's the exact same game. It's just in streaking, you're, you are a streaking man that is being pursued by the police. And in this video that they're showing during the strip video aspect of it, you are a, a nude man streaking from some type of weird Viking monster things. So, yeah, I. What? I, exactly. I put that much time into something that plays no role in this movie at all. Really nothing at all other than I was like, I really like arcade games. I bet if I put my mind to it, I can figure out what the fuck this is. So I finally did find help of people over at Reddit. I'd say your name, but you're not going to listen to this and I can't remember it. So, um, so yeah, they're a strip, uh, strip video gaming, uh, which has no, as, as you said, there's no rules to it. It's just literally, I'm going to play for a couple seconds. There's going to be two lines of dialogue. Then let's take off clothes. Yay. And Jefferson is, is dressed as a cop for some reason. Well, yeah, he has a police hat and a baton for some reason. It's what you do when you play strip poker and strip Candyland. You just put on, at some point, somebody has to put on a, a cop hat and, and carry a baton. I'm pretty sure that's somewhere in the rules, yeah. So, and just the music in this movie is just such terrible, like... I'm, 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 I'm not going to say uh, it's terribly derivative... Of just like 80s soundtrack music, like Kenny Loggins. It's that soft rock kind of. I don't know. It's it's terrible. It's terrible. I, that took way too long. Yeah, it's um, it's your standard fare. I mean, the whole thing is the money they spent on is they spent on the main song, which is the joystick song. Everything else they they got for free. They fucking they were ripped off. <laughs> Look, I, I I'm still jamming out. That that brings a smile to my face. I've seen this movie about five uh, six times now, and it, it just brings a smile to my face every fucking time. And just to give credit where credits due, um, the song of course is called Joysticks, and it's actually music by Ray Kineski. Um, I tried to look him up. I tried to get any additional information on him. Guess what? Couldn't do it. <laughs> he has disappeared. Yeah, I mean, it was it was probably just a fake name because he was like, I'm not having my name on this bullshit song. I want to I want to do actual music. Or he killed himself directly after this movie, which hopefully is the case. <laughs> uh, but no, so, back, back to the um, movie. Yeah, so uh, the fat guy. 
I'm I'm terrible with names. Uh, Dorfus. Um, the fact, yeah, Dorfus pulls Eugene up to to the roof to play a practical joke because we work at an arcade and are teenagers, and therefore we are hell raisers. Exactly. And they take a fire extinguisher up with them, and they proceed to spray a fire extinguisher into. Uh, Jefferson Bailey's uh, office back room thing where they are naked almost, semi-nude. And that sets off the fire alarm. Yep, because reasons. Would would a fire extinguisher trip a fire alarm? No, not at all. (sighs) Probably not. If I had to guess, um, I haven't done that experiment yet, but I can do that sometime this week and let everybody know for sure. But up until then, uh, we're going to go with no. Yeah, so then we are introduced to John Doe Baker, a.k.a. Mitchell. Fucking Mitchell. <laughs> that can um, be explained later. Who, uh, yeah, fucking... Who's, uh, who's a rich... Who's just some rich asshole. That's his whole character. He's, he's some rich asshole. Um, and he has, like, two henchmen who are... One of them is always wearing a, an angel's cap for no reason. Yeah. Well, other than that, he likes baseball, I guess. Seems that way. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah. So, and like his teenage daughter, uh, who is the terrible valley girl with a voice of death, <laughs> she is, she is his, his daughter. Yeah. And we, we like, and we, we see in previous scenes, we see that the two henchmen are just basically leering over his teenage daughter. Yeah. Just gawking. Oh yeah. Then we find out, like two scenes later, that they're, like that they're cousins. Uh, they're cousins. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that's also, like, that was very uncomfortable. Yeah, and I mean that scene specifically leading into uh, j- revealing uh, Jedi Baker. Uh, pretty much, uh, it was once uh, they fill up the room with uh, the fire extinguisher and the alarm goes off um they pretend like it, there's uh jefferson pretends like it's a fire going on so he'll get the two topless ladies to run out and embarrass themselves because they embarrassed eugene earlier so what happens when they run out they run right into the hands of joe don baker and then at that point in time, then yes, it's revealed that uh, Valley Girl is in fact his daughter, and yeah, we have these two assholes who are nephews of his. That uh, yeah, pretty much just uh, the mean guy and the dumb guy. I mean that you've seen in movies millions upon millions of times before. So yeah, yeah well, it more it's more just the dumb guy and the more dumb guy. Yeah, that's that's more. It's realistic. like they're constantly competing and being stupid, and. Yeah. Uh, so they get like Joe Don Baker's like, oh, this place is decadent and filthy, and it should be shut down. Blah blah blah. I'm a rich old asshole. Yeah, pretty much and, anybody uh, who who is of the age, uh, at least thirties by now, Joe Don Baker was pretty much the Reagan Republican. He was all about uh, we need to keep our kids out of dirtiness and out of hedonism and out of blah 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 blah. We need to keep everything pure. Good old traditional American value. Exactly. And uh, so, yeah, he is he is this big old fuddy-duddy in that regards. And then you got the hip, cool Jefferson Bailey, like, come on, man, it's we're just having fun. Um, so naturally, the uh, the old fuddy-duddy, uh, uh, J. Don Baker, wants to shut down the arcade because his he can't control his daughter. His daughter loves the arcade, and uh, he, he sees it as a, as a cesspool of violence and filth. So, yeah, so we are, like, at this point, we get kind of the big picture of what this movie is about. This movie is just, we've got to save the youth, youth, the youth center. Exactly. Which, like, every seventh film made in the 80s had that plot. If not more, yeah. <laughs> it's like, we've got to save the X, because rich old assholes don't understand us cool teenagers. Yeah. So... We've <laughs> exactly and we're gonna do fun and hip stuff while we're doing it. It's it's the yeah. it's the old thing that was really big back in the eighties, even a little bit into the early nineties. It's the hip cool kids against the the against the adults who don't know what's going on. It, it's basically always just Animal House on repeat. Yeah, pretty much. So 
the uh, two cousins get the clever idea of going undercover to dig up some dirt on on Joseph Bailey and the arcade. Yep. And and because nobody fucking knows them there, they decide that they have to be in disguises. And one of them, even uh, to maximize his unrecognizability, decides to basically wear drag. Uh, yeah, very bad drag. And like, and the the just the whole like Max Maxine, uh, like when when he's a dude, he's Max. When he's a lady, he's Maxine. And it's it's all just very uncomfortable because at some point it looks like he's having a, a gender identity crisis, which is then just totally dropped from the movie. Yeah, I mean, this was back in the 80s. This was back where somebody cross-dressing was totally just for comedic value, as far as that goes. Not always good, and most of the time not good comedic value. But, but-, but I will say, I will say, he was, he was much more attractive uh, with makeup on than without. I can agree with that. But, yeah, he's like this very unconvincing transvestite, and just everyone in the arcade wants to bone him. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, he has a massive Mexican biker stereotype that uh, that lets him know that that's his turf, that little small area of the arcade, and that, yeah, he wants to get a piece. And uh, we hadn't even talked about probably the most interesting character in this entire movie, which also meets Maxine at the front of the arcade. And wants to bone her. Of course. It says, uh, uh, compliments her legs, his legs, who's a her. Go ahead. <laughs> And yeah, so we yeah, are. This is who is late, who is later in the film refers to himself to King Vidiot. King Vidiot. <laughs> Fun fact: uh, the European uh, release for UHF, the Al Yankovic movie, was also called The Vidiot. I can see that. So yeah, we King, we introduced to King Vidiot, who is played by Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. Yep. And he's like totally unrecognizable in this, John Grease. Yeah, John Grease, uh, yeah, pretty much uh, King Vidiot. He he is your, they mix up so many stereotypes with him because he has kind of the late 70s punk thing, but also mid 80s goth type thing. And he's just batshit yeah, yeah. insane. Yeah, he's somewhere in between that. And along with him are four of them are four women who I just feel dreadfully sorry for. <laughs> dreadfully. Because their only lines in the movie is imitating ghosts from Pac-Man. Yep. That's that's wait, 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 wait. That's all they do. They think... got there, they showed up day after day. All they got to do was follow around this fucking idiot in a leather jacket and go, wink, 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 <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, that was that was their entire job there, it appears. But they were also dressed up in, like, post-punk type of shit and had makeup punk on Punk goth face. shit. Exactly. A and silly and they looked good. They looked really good, which is why I felt extra bad for them. Like, they looked great. But all they were giving to do was to imitate the ghosts in Pac-Man because this is a movie about a video arcade. Exactly. So yeah. Um, so. <coughs> so yeah. Needless to say, uh, yeah, the, the uh, Max and Maxine whole storyline that kind of gets cut a little bit short when they think of the brilliant idea, the best way to possibly make, they're trying their best to get their fucking uncle to be proud of them. There's something very disturbing about that. I'm not going to go into that right now. Maybe we'll come back. Yeah. I don't know like uh, why they want to please their uncle so much. Well, what they, yeah, what their relationship is, is he raising them or like, what does he do? And, so many un- unanswered questions. Exactly. But their brilliant idea comes up of the uh, the way we can make our uncle proud of us is let's come here at night when there's no security and steal all the arcade machines out of the arcade. Which seems like a lot of work. If you're going to commit a crime to try to get a place shut down, why not try arson? 
But nope. There yeah, we go. that would probably well, that would have probably worked a lot better. Exactly. But yeah, their plan is to steal every last arcade. And this is a full size arcade. There's a lot of arcade games in here. Uh, yeah, but- yeah. So they rent a a U haul basically, and uh, they go in there and they and they manage actually to to steal all the arcade cabinets. But while that's going on, because uh, was it Eugene or yeah. some girl who? Uh, yeah, it was Eugene. He overheard uh, Max and the other dude's plan. There, yeah. Uh, so he went to Joseph Bailey, and he's like, "Okay, so you know that a couple of of crim- uh, a couple of guys are going to break into your place of business during the night. Mm-hmm. You know when, you know where, mm-hmm. but instead of calling the police." Like any sane person would do, yep. Joseph Bailey says, "No, we're not going to call the cops. Not while my grandpa's out of town." <laughs> Cause I why? Guess, I think they must have tons and tons of cocaine in the back. They just totally skip over talking about. I mean, this is the eighties. <laughs> But yeah, it, it never says why. It, uh, Eugene even says they're t- they're talking about stealing our all the arcade games. We should call the cops. And then is just shot right down, saying, "No, my grandfather's no, out of town." My, not while my the owner, my grandfather's out of town. What is your grandfather going to be upset that you called the police while a crime was happening at his place of business? Yeah, and, and they just drop it there. There's no more talk about it. Like, no, now we're gonna now we're gonna home alone it a little bit. So yeah, um, so the first idea yeah, so, is yeah, yeah. we got to keep an eye on. So yeah, they they, 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 they got there. they get all the arcades into the U-Haul, but while they're doing it, Joseph Bailey and crew uh, go and suck all the gasoline out of the truck. Oh yeah, siphon every last drop. So. Uh, the two bumble, bumbling idiots have to go and buy gas, come back, and then that time they just put all the video ca- the arcades back into the arcade. Yep. Uh, which and then they just drive off. They don't notice that like the car is just as the same weight as <laughs> the, when they got there. Yeah. Uh, they just drive and like, yeah, we're so cool. Everything went great. But... Which of course it didn't. Exactly, but, but the side mission here, I mean, while they knew that was going to be happening, they decided to send none other than Dorfus and Eugene over to Joe Don Baker's house because they need to um, do because something. Because of reasons. Reasons, yeah, that, that's why. Reasons is why uh, Dorfus. There was no explanation <laughs> what they were going to there to do, nope. what their goal was, what they hoped to achieve. <laughs> no, we just sent these two guys to to the rich asshole's house and he'll uh, hijinks and shoe. Exactly. Again, it go, there's a lot of just weird bits in this movie that don't ha- connect to anything and don't uh, pay off in any way or, or anything. It's just, oh, here's a random bit. Yeah, exactly. And they don't need to. But let's say Dorfus and Eugene do get to Joe Don Baker's house and they climb up a ladder. Um, and of course, in any type of fashion in a comedy movie, when you climb up a ladder, climb into somebody's window, the ladder's going to fall down. However, the window they climbed into was none other than Joe Don Baker and his wife's bedroom. However, Joe Don Baker is not there yet, but his wife is. And uh, Yeah, and she's just, just passed Pass the fuck out. Yep. And then just the fat fucking fat guy goes up and basically encourages Eugene to rape an unconscious woman. He's like, <laughs> yeah, she, she's one. Yeah, hey, hey, woo. Like grab her, grabs her thigh and rubs it. <laughs> like, yeah, don't you want a piece? Angle the, 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 uh, the eighties were a different time. <laughs> that's all. I, that, that's all I got there. <laughs> and uh, and uh, like uh, somehow Eugene trips over and falls into the bed. Yep. And oh god, this is so wrong. <laughs> the unconscious woman basically starts sleep raping Eugene in return. Yep. Um... <laughs> She's just fondling him. It's like oh, it's been so long. And, oh. <laughs> and just, it, it, and it goes on for a, like well, quite a while. Long. Just way too for long. For way too long. 
I will say though, she was pretty hot for an unconscious woman. Yeah, I have to say, I, I still wasn't. I wasn't one hundred percent sure if she was uh, essentially sleep molesting or if she was uh, just she was awake, but she couldn't open her eyes for some reason. Uh, either way, well, yeah. There was we learn of... later. John Doe Baker comes home, and his wife is still sleep molesting Eugene. Oh yeah. He goes in, opens the closet which Dorfin is hiding in behind some coats, doesn't notice shit. Just no. hangs up his clothes, and then he goes to bed, and then they are three in the bed. He still hasn't noticed anything. Even though the sleep station is still going on while he's asleep. Yeah, sleep going on. She's like, oh, oh, and moaning, and he's like, oh, nah, no, I don't want to have sex with you, woman. <laughs> like, I, I, just, I just figured, like, he knows. Oh, yeah. He knows perfectly what is going on. He, he just doesn't to. give a fuck. At the, that point in time, yeah, he's just like, you know what? I've given up. My only, my only joy in life right now is to try to shut down this goddamn arcade. <laughs> that's all. That's and, all, uh, all there is. So yeah, like he's like, and he just lies in bed and just tries to sleep while, essentially, people are fuck. His wife is fucking another guy next to him, and he does not give a fuck. No, not at all. And in fact, he was he was just about ready to go to sleep. Until um, <laughs> Dorfus, uh, uh, this is one thing we haven't covered. Dorfus is known for one major thing in this movie, and that is uh, his flatulence. Uh, he in almost every oh. scene he's in, he is he is doing rid that. <laughs> ridiculous amounts of farting. So of course, in this scene, as he's escaping from the closet to try to get the fuck out of there before Jadon Baker finds him. He lets a huge, massive, earth-shattering fart. And, uh, of course, jo <laughs> fucking Joe Don Baker is, blames his wife. Of course he does, because he, <laughs> he has no idea what's going because on. He fucking hates that whore. Yeah, he hates her so much. He, like, you, should, you should take those damn pills that the doctor gave you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, like, basically encouraging her to abuse... Uh, like doctor prescribed medicine exactly which is why she's like almost why she's like almost awake but not awake she's just fucking high out of her mind on on painkillers yeah that's probably which i had to assume uh yeah i'd have to imagine so so yeah uh, uh well, so I, I, yeah I, like dorfin fucking finally gets out somehow i <laughs> failed to notice how uh, you know, after the um, fart was gone, he was ready to go, and uh, yeah, Joe Don Baker just could give two fucks less. And so. because he's a bro, he doesn't leave his man behind, and so he goes and rings Joe Don Baker's bell. Joe Don Baker, already sick of fucking everything, stumbles down in his pajamas and just opens the door and gives him the longest thousand yard stare <laughs> I have ever seen. Just, he's, he's like, at, at, he would could at any moment explode and kill a person. Yeah, I mean, we'll go ahead and say this right here. Joe Don Baker is by far the best actor in this whole goddamn movie. Oh, <laughs> but, yes. But I think so much of it wasn't even acting. I think they literally no, did wake him up. No, it was just him, him being annoyed that he had to be there <laughs> Cause in this it, stupid movie. <laughs> Because, yeah, it did seem like... He was just lucky he had to play an annoyed guy. Exactly. Like, it felt like they they did, in fact, wake him up at 2 o'clock in the morning to do this scene. And he wasn't acting. He was just like, you motherfuckers aren't paying me enough to do this shit, <laughs> to pay attention to you guys. Uh, so, yeah, pretty and much... So, yeah. Yeah, Dorf is... Dorf will, uh, uh, Dorf will, uh, uh, he uh, distracts Joe Don Baker... While well, Eugene finally manages to get out of the grasp of the amazing sleep unconscious woman with more <laughs> like more awareness than anyone. Oh yeah. Uh and she he like, okay, I can finally get and he goes just out of the bedroom door because the the ladder has fallen down, of course. Yep. And at that same moment, in terrible annoying Valley Girl <laughs> pokes her head out of her her bedroom and sees Eugene coming out of her mom's bedroom <laughs> and she like she doesn't like she kind of reacts like huh Eugene and mom 
it looks like a bad cartoon because the way he just looks at her and then slowly backs up back into <laughs> the bedroom like okay uh you two know each other um how about just fucking get the fuck out of there no he just slowly without saying anything just backs back up into the bedroom that he was currently pretty much being molested in <laughs> Until finally, and he, like, yeah. and like she, she kind of, you know, she's she's more like she isn't even shocked. She's just, oh, that's weird. Yeah, Meh. she's kind of fine with it. Uh, something tells me I I don't want to read too much in this, but but Joe Don Baker definitely beats his wife and children, um, and that's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a dark area that I didn't want to go over because it doesn't show it in the movie, but it's it real it's definitely happening. Um, you can read the subtext. Uh, so yeah, at that uh. point in time, she was like, nope, not going to read any more into this. Fuck it. I'm going back to sleep. You go back in there. Fuck my mother. Um, don't care. Yeah. So Eugene finally manages to get down and they're like, they're like in this, like kind of for outside foyer. I don't know what you'd call that with like there are columns on either side and, uh, and the roof goes over the front door. Yeah, it's kind of a porch. Yeah, it's a kind of a porch. And Eugene just slides down the roof of the porch and comes down. And like Joe Don Baker is still, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Even though I, there's nothing, you could have done nothing else except be in my house <laughs> at 2 a.m. Yep, but nothing weird happening here. We're just going to go here. No, ahead and nothing uh... weird happening here. Okay, just go and leave. Okay, yes, we will. But then, fortunately, Tweedledee and Tweedledumass arrive with a truck in which they believe they have all of the arcade machines in. So Joe Don Baker runs over to them, and uh, needless to say, uh, Dorfus and Eugene, and even Joe Don Baker's daughter at this point in time, because she came into the fray, they all fuck off to go back to the arcade because it's two o'clock in the morning, and that's what you do after you. What are you going to do after breaking and entering in a house? Let's go to an arcade. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, pretty much, uh, obviously Joe Don Baker finds out that dumb and dumbass, uh, didn't get shit, uh, which they're amazed by whatever. We cut back to the arcade and Jefferson's like, everybody, thanks so much for helping me steal these arcade machines out of the back of this truck again. We're going to, let's bring all the arcade machines back in. Cause that's really just a lot of fucking work for no reason. Um, so we're well, going to, I would assume that like, yeah, I would assume that, that, yeah, that's. No, they're like all oh, that all happened. They they were they were robbing the store and shit while while Eugene and, and Dorfus were were in the house. Exactly, yeah. But yeah, uh, but like by the time they get back, they've like already just they've they've robbed the place. They've robbed the arcades back and set them all up in the exact same order and place they were. Exactly. Something that would easily So take. they were gone a fucking long uh, time. I mean, this would take a day or more because this is a full-size <laughs> arcade. This, I would say just panning through the entire arcade, just a little side note, um, I think it's fair to say 50 arcade games, right? Yeah. 50 arcade games, we'll say they weigh anywhere in between 50 pounds and uh, 200 so even on a hand truck, one at a time, because there's no way they had more than one hand truck. Well, let's give them a couple hand trucks. Getting that many fucking okay. arcade games moved from point A to point B, then moved back from point B to point A again, it doesn't fucking happen that fast. My immersion's broke, uh, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's where your immersion broke. Exactly. Okay. It took a lot, but I finally got there. <laughs> uh, so... Then, of course, we come to, uh, like, of course this was going to happen in the movie. We have a video game off. Oh, yeah, it was bound to happen because the whole thing is King Vidiot comes in. It's a private party. Uh, Jeff Bailey, he, he lets them know this is a private party. This is just for people, for friends. You're not allowed here. And, and King Vidiot's kind of a weird, whiny baby, so he's like, let's play for it. I'll play you in whatever game you want, um, which... Like, no, just get the fuck out! Yeah, get the fuck out, or I'm going to beat the shit out of you. No, they didn't get to that point, uh, but needless to say, one of Dorf's other talents, other than farting up his pants and shitting himself, is uh, video games. So, yeah, uh for King Vidiot to stay in the arcade, he has to win a video game against Dorfus. Uh, and the video game happens to be Satan's Hollow, which I have actually played this game before in an arcade, but it was in an arcade when I was like eight. 
years old. It's yeah, a, and it's a bad, it's a bad Gradius ripoff or a Galaga ripoff. Yeah, and they had. Uh, I, I, I would like took took a look at some trivia about this movie. Uh, this is basically uh, like the Super Mario Brothers three moment in the Wizard. Exactly. Because this game hadn't been out yet. Except the only difference is nobody gave a shit about Satan's Hollow. No, they really didn't. There was nothing amazing and fascinating <laughs> about it. It was literally just a Galaga game. Well, well that was a risky and, game. Uh, yeah, but they they have the fucking stage uh, and the, like the huge video monitors and everything. Yep. Uh, and attached to that are the most dumbest arcade controls ever, just ever designed. <laughs> I agree. Um, that was like, the, so they, they, they have to stand upright and out of the ground comes a pole uh, shaped like an arrow, yep. like a kind of a long arrow. And on top of that is a bowling ball with buttons on either side. And you have to swing the pole as a joystick and the buttons are on the bowling ball. Yep, that's pretty accurate. This would this would make any game unplayable because you're you, it's not using the control scheme that you know, so any skill is kind of like out the fucking water. Yep, and that's one thing is I did look into this. Uh, I I put way more research into this movie than I should have. I really I I do have a life. I have other things to do, but um, <laughs> when I saw it at first, I was like, okay, this is just a bad mock up. This isn't actually real. Because it is so ridiculous looking to where it is pretty much a bowling ball on top of a pole. And that is their entire uh, arcade stick. But it's real. It is entirely real. During competitions, they would come up uh, in different arcades. They'd come up with the most ridiculous looking uh, control schemes as possible. For people to play games, not for a challenge or whatever, just for the flash, for the pizzazz. For a competition, I, I can I can believe that I can believe that I can believe that it's 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 hilariously stupid looking, and you would go look in that eh, video games, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, pretty much. Uh, of course, the two of them battle each other, and it's kind of the old scenario of uh, the guy, the cocky guy versus the uh, tryhard guy. So you got King Vidiot over here playing his heart out, hoping he's doing as good as he is, while Dorfus is literally just eating a hot dog uh, while the game's playing. He's not even attempting to play the game. And uh, he loses a life uh, while King Vidiot's still playing. King Vidiot's score is rising. The tension the tension is just so goddamn thick because you don't know what's going to happen here. It doesn't look like Dorfus is even going to play. But then he finishes his chili dog. Uh, King Vidiot's still at it. And then uh, just when you think, okay, now he's finished his chili dog, he's definitely going to play now. He bends over and finds a half-eaten candy bar that he left there from earlier. That he decides he needs because to he's that. fat. Yeah, he's fat, so he leaves uh, Get in. candy go- candy bars. That's what fat people do. I'm fat. I do that all the time. <laughs> actually, uh, get it? He's fat. <laughs> so, needless to say, finally, all the tension has finally been broken. Um, uh, so yeah, Dorfer finally starts playing. At which point, just video just stops playing. Because he's a legit crazy person. <laughs> well, Vidiot loses his last life. It doesn't explain that well, though. Okay, I just thought, like, okay, I'm I'm done. I'm I'm bored now. I'll just go and hang out with my Pac-Man ghost chicks. Pretty much. But no, then, then Dorful is. How do you no? First, my question: How do you last longer in a video game by not playing than by playing? Yeah. Um... Like, were they playing Mario Party on? <laughs> yeah, fucking Satan's Hollow, man. That's how the game plays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like, he didn't do nothing, and he lasted, like, his score was lower, but he lasted a lot longer than Vidiot. Oh, exactly. But then Dorful finally starts playing, and he's just, the he. it is the stupidest shit ever. He literally tongues <laughs> the fucking bowling ball controller. Yeah, sure. He, like, gives it... Bowling ball controller lingus. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to show off that he is a super master at this. So he's literally playing with his elbow and playing with his uh, chin and tongue. And yeah, it's just, it's silly. I was, I was legit 
waiting for him to start hump the bowling ball controller, but still be doing awesome. That's probably on the cutting room floor somewhere. It's like, yeah, so. I'm a great at video <laughs> games. Ah. I'd have to imagine that at some point in time that was shot for this movie. And uh, so, yeah, uh, video loses, of yep. course, because Dorfel is a video game god. Exactly. And um, <clears throat> so, but then they go up to video and say, okay, you can stay. So it was all for fucking nothing. Yep. So yeah, pretty much uh, it, it, there's no reason why that last scene should have even happened other than to show that Dorfin's fat and very good at video games. And that video is kind of okay at video games. Yeah, it, that's a little bit of a backstory. That, that'll that come into play later. So, and... Uh, Oh, yeah, so, uh, like, Joe John Baker storms in and demands that the arcade is go, uh, uh, the, that the arcade be shut down, yep. even though it's a private party and it's not open for business. Um, the arcade hasn't broken any law, so no public official would have any fucking reason to shut it down. Mm-hmm. This is uh, a little side note here as well. This is one thing I noticed today that I haven't noticed before when watching this movie. I said, uh, when I watched it today, it was probably my sixth time viewing the movie. Joe Don Baker, I think, was genuinely pissed off. And this also leads to my child abuse a- allegations because the way <laughs> he manhandles his fake daughter in this, he actually literally holds her by the throat a few times and just kind of swings her around as he's delivering his lines. It's like, oh, my <laughs> God, like he is really he is really hurting this girl. Uh, yeah, he's Mitchell. He doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Ultimately, um, yeah. It's it's once again, it's the it's the good, cool, young, hip guys versus the Puritan old man, um, and finding out. So yeah. Uh, so uh, like he can't. Uh, Joe Don Baker can't fucking rely on his fucking idiot cousins. Nephews. So. Nephews, nephews, sorry. No problem. Uh, the dumb, uh, so he can't rely on his nephews. So he brings in King Vidyard and promises him his own video arcade if he helps him in shutting down the arcade. In the, yeah, sh- shut down the arcade. Well, his own Which, video arcade game. <laughs> that, yeah, uh, yeah, his own video arcade game. That he's very. Was that mean like. Did that mean his own cabinet or like a video game based on King Vidiot. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in the context it was going to be a singular arcade cabinet. If that I only to... he could use. Exactly. That he was th- this actually seemed very important to more than one character in this movie that th- that a certain video game or arcade game was theirs and nobody else should touch it even when they're not playing it. People were very territorial in the 80s. I guess so. They were worried about Cubans coming in and stealing their video games, I guess. So, yeah, but, yeah, so uh, King Vidiot's plan, he gets him the best plan. His plan is to get mini cycles, <laughs> like one of those miniature motorcycles yeah. for him and his four Pac-Man ghost girls. Mm-hmm. And they ride them into the arcade, causing a disturbance, and the police have to come. Yep. And this is somehow ammunition to get the arcade closed down. Yeah, at this point this in time, is, it's gone the, far the, enough to where they get the mayor's attention uh, because of the police showing because up. Because of hooligans came and fucked shit up. And didn't even really oh, fuck shit up. Hooligans came into your store and wrecked shit. We better close your store down. Exactly. And, and Sir. this is going to have to go to a community meeting to see if it should be able to stay open typical 80s logic yeah and then like this fucking whole the next whole scene is like the climax and it's the stupidest kangaroo court ever (laughs) yeah i think uh let me see here um just at the beginning of it uh watch part uh jefferson bailey comes up and like i'd like to address the court and let you know one thing he's like what's that 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 uh, Mr. Rudder, who is Joe Don Baker's character, is full of shit. And then everybody, in the, 
<laughs> everybody in the in the fake courtroom just jumps up and applause on their side because they got the they got the young hip kids on uh, one side of the courtroom. Then you've got the old fuddy duddy adults on the other side. So you know who like is it, who. It's the exact scene from Animal House where they are like putting the uh, better house on trial. Exactly. It's that exact scene. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, absolutely no difference other than uh, Animal and, House was better. Yeah, other than Animal House, like, had some form of legitimacy. It was like, okay, so it's like a, a the, the university is holding a hearing on whether or not this, like, is too wild and, and can't be trusted with its responsibilities and shit. It's, but no, this is just some town meeting which like holds enough power to shut down a legitimate business. <laughs> yep. That's not doing anything illegal at all. No, it's not doing anything illegal. At least we don't know that yet. But, but think about the children. Yeah. But think about the children. So like they call like character witnesses, Joe Don Baker calls character witnesses and, and experts like a nurse. <laughs> yeah. Just who a... says like, yeah, just a random nurse, and she's like, oh, video games are very bad for your health. You get calluses on in between your index finger and thumb. <laughs> Science, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And then the coach is like, yeah, all my boys are just playing video games now. It's even worse than drugs and booze and even women. And even self-harm. And even women. <laughs> even women. Yeah. Like, is this going from not worst to worst? Are drugs the best? It seems that way. And women the worst. Drugged out women are probably the best and worst. So, and yeah. yeah, like, uh, it, it was at this point that, uh, that I noticed that, like, the only the two girls in the beginning with a car are the ones who have dialogue and get their tits out. Like, they get their tits out so often in this movie. They... <laughs> It's like 50-50 whether they are topless or not. Yeah, because at this point in time, it's when they they go, they go do such a cartoony thing to where it's like, okay, you tell your side of the story. And, of course, they go Joe Don Baker first, and he explains it, and it, it's all in red, and it looks evil. Yeah, like we get, and... we get his mind's eye view of the arcade, and it's all just shot through a red filter, the two girls from the beginning are there with their tits out, wearing dominatrix outfitted <laughs> and just whipping whips at nothing. Exactly. Just, <laughs> just doing it for the hell of it. And, 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 and J uh, Jefferson Bailey with like wearing a pimp hat, <laughs> pimping out video game arcades, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Who. That and women and, and just, mud and then topless just, mud wrestling for some reason. <laughs> Yes, topless mud wrestling, that's in the arcade. <laughs> and just one woman just humping her ass up to a video arcade and getting off on it. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> she was just ass humping an arcade machine. Just, oh, yeah, do me, fucking Gallagher. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was just literally, like, I mean, that's the only thing missing, the only thing missing from this scene was like a block of a subtitle on the screen saying, this is what conservative America actually believes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was literally the cartoon angle of good devil or, or good angel, bad devil. Cause needless to say, yeah. as soon as this ridiculousness is over, then they ask, uh, Bailey like, okay, well we, well, your side of the story now. And of course it's the absolute opposite. They're all God yeah, fearing, he, like, he's wearing teaching white. teaching them physics through video games and computers and shit. Exactly. They're all in the bar drinking milk because <laughs> milk is good for you. It's clean and healthy and white. <laughs> Uh, and, oh yes, yeah, so white, very white. I don't think there was a black. I don't think a black person was in this movie. They didn't have a talking role, but there were some in the arcade. Uh, they just didn't okay. have any type of. Real, they were backgrounds for sure. Yeah, there was a few few minorities, but none of them got real roles. They, they were they were seen, but not heard. Exactly, <laughs> like the like that. That's kind of explains the entire eighties. Minorities seen, but not heard. Uh, 
but no. So, um, uh, so yeah. Then of course, uh, then in uh, Jefferson Bailey's uh, view of the arcade, Dorfus is talking to a priest about how holy and sacrament. And then of course they have to throw in another fart joke. No, no, he's talking to the actual pope. Oh, that was the pope. Oh, I this didn't even realize. This is supposed it. to be the actual pope <laughs> in oh, the arcade. I didn't like, know. Yeah, either. remember Leviticus nine fourteen. He who hath smelt, <laughs> he who hath dealt it, is the first to smelt it. <laughs> and that was literally the line <laughs> from that goddamn scene. It was goddamn fucking <laughs> like yeah, the Pope. And he's like, oh yeah, of course. No, that's not in the Bible. You're the fucking Pope. <laughs> yeah. So um. So needless uh, to say. So, yeah. So needless to say, like, uh, so and like at the, at the end. Just, Justin Bailey, no, was it no? Justin Bailey is the cheat code in Metroid to get Samus <laughs> off it. Exactly. Jefferson Bailey. There you go. <laughs> I wonder if those two are related. I anyway, hope so. I'm going to find out. Uh, anyway, uh, Jefferson Bailey brings out his like best evidence, which is a slide, <laughs> and like they they brought out slides, and I was like, what the fuck must it be for like someone born in like someone born 1998 to watch this movie they don't recognize any technology at all not at all i mean like they have polaroid cameras and uh video arcades and fax machines (laughs) (laughs) yeah fucking slides so he pulls out a slide of of the moment where the two topless chicks ran into joe don baker's arms Exactly. During the earlier so have, scene with the fire extinguisher and yeah. the uh, the fire alarm. And like, so his like definitive evidence is a rich old white guy with his arms around two topless teenagers, probably underage, in his video arcade. <laughs> and that's supposed to prove that the arcade is great. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, it was destroying the uh, Joe Don Baker's like totally moral compass as far as that goes, because that's what he was arguing on. These are but, so yeah, immoral. but but like it's you're showing everybody, yeah, like an elderly man with two topless <laughs> teenage girl around the arms at the arcade to prove that the arcade is on the up and up. It's like <laughs> nothing, nothing weird happens here, sir. Just look at this. <laughs> Yeah, just, you know, just Joe Don Baker with two uh, topless women with half his daughter's age. So, yeah. Uh, So, yeah. So, yeah. uh, So, like, then, like, the mayor goes and, like, I can't see the arcade has broken any laws. And should not that be, should therefore not be shut down. Well, duh. <laughs> yeah, it took him a long time this, to figure that out. I have this fucking stupid mock trial then. This was already known. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, hooray, they won. The good guys, the hip, cool kids, they won. So, naturally. But, like, Joe Don Spaker is not going to give up. He's not going to. He'll hear from me. I'm, I'll be coming for you, darn kids. Oh, yeah. So, Jefferson Bailey says, like, okay. We 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 fucking play a video game for it because John Doe Baker knows video games. Like he was like, no, that's fucking stupid. Yeah, we 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 decided one argument one time before in this movie by playing video games. I'll tell you what, we want you to leave us alone. You want us to shut down this arcade. The only way we could do it is play video games against each other. Which like John Don Baker has no motivation to do, but agrees to anyway. Yeah, since he's always already buddies with King Vidiot in this situation, he, he he feels very confident of King Vidiot's abilities when it comes to video games. So, naturally... Yeah, even though he lost that one time. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, this is another so, plot point yeah, we so haven't like, touched on. Is actually, um, yeah, Justin Bailey. Let's just call him that. That's a better name. <laughs> Justin Bailey has had an ongoing thing throughout the entire movie. He doesn't play these games. He doesn't play these arcade games. And it never says why. He just doesn't play them. He sounds like a stick in the mug, a mud that he runs an arcade. Uh, no, I like, I, it's just because he's a fucking jock. Pretty and much. And he doesn't want to be late. That's what it seems like. like. 
No, no, they they pull out this bullshit reason in the end, but it's bullshit. He's just he just doesn't want to see lame. I think so. That's probably the case. So needless to say, but of course, yeah, the 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 stupidest reason why anyone would not <laughs> play video games, yeah, is that he was like losing like he we we flash back a couple of years, when the and he's like was just first got, open up. Yeah, when the arcade was just first open. And he's got this chick in the back room where they were playing strip uh, streaking there. Yeah, it was. It, but the whole and, thing, that uh, was the love of his life. That was the love of his life, which we don't know. We have heard nothing about. We have no investment in the relationship. We're just supposed to go with it. Yeah, pretty much. Just just sign on for this. You'll be all right. So it flashbacks to them about to start fucking for the first time. And like there are candles all over the fucking video cap video arcade cabinets. <laughs> yeah. Fucking candles on the cabinets. That's a terrible idea. That's not safe and kind of blasphemous, I have to say. Ego, ego, it's romantic. It's rom- 80s it's, romantic. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, r- fucking ruining arcade cabinets is fucking romantic. Let's do it. And we might as well point out here that during this flashback is the first time that we saw we see a fully nude woman. Uh, not that it shows any extreme close-ups or anything like that, but it, it is a woman not wearing any clothes instead of just being topless, like it has been throughout the yeah. rest of the movie. But we don't see any bush. No, unfortunately they not. Cut, they, cut, they masterfully cut around it. Exactly. A little bit of ass, but definitely no bush. Because you know there's a bush there. This was 83. Yeah, yeah. Massive this was bush. the 80s. But like and like this would be the perfect time to show someone fucking on a video arcade cabinet. <laughs> they don't do it. They just lay on the floor on some pillows like fucking jackasses when they could be fucking on a cabinet. Well, you know, I, I I'm going to bring up issues with that. You m- mentioned that is one thing you wanted from the m- movie from the beginning. Yes. I can it's s- a movie about sex and video game cabinets. See, I can see that happening on a air hockey table. I can see that happening on a ski ball lane. I don't well, see- I mean, uh, you don't have to fucking lay down on it. You just have to have the chick rest her ass on it a bit. Okay. And then, you know, you're good to go. Oh, well, that makes more sense, yeah. I can see you doing that. Or, or just, just, hold, or just you know, bending over and leaning on the arcade machine. Just anything sex plus arcade machine. Okay. Yeah, that's is what I yeah. wanted to see. I can understand that. But, yeah, right no, no, they just fucking lay on the ground on pillows like fucking idiots. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. And so like, so we are we are introduced into the stupidest reason ever why someone couldn't play video games. They are just fucking on the floor in the back office of this video arcade, and the girl's father just barges in, mid coitus, and just rips her off, fucking Justin Bailey, yeah, and just <laughs> and like you you're never seeing him again, and <laughs> because. He can't play the games because as he was fucking the girl, he saw her father's face reflected in a video arcade, in like an arcade in the, on the monitor. The screen, yeah. So he feels ill every time he looks at an arcade <laughs> machine now, which you would think he would have fucking thrown up his guts. Like he now. has <laughs> post traumatic, he has post traumatic <laughs> stress disorder because he was cock blocked. <laughs> PTSD from a fucking girl's daddy during fucking. That's great. Uh, so, yeah. And like, and, and yeah, so, oh yeah, uh, like, bef- yeah, and before all this flashback, uh, like, Joe Don Baker gets to the arcade and he's like, so where's your guy? We're gonna play. And fucking Doofus can't be found. Dorfus, Doofus, whatever. Either way. <laughs> Uh, he can't be found, so they don't know what to do. And like, hey, give us 15 minutes. And <laughs> in those 15 minutes, they go to the back office, they have this flashback, yep. and Eugene sort of <clears throat> sort of uh, coaxes him into like, you have to face your fears and <laughs> fucking do it, man. Yeah. And... After all that, they have like a training montage. Yep. Where, <coughs> where Justin Bailey doesn't even play video games. He just do, does sit ups and arm pushes. <laughs> yeah, pretty while much. While 
fucking Eugene reads out a strategy guide for Galaga or whatever. Uh, Super Pack is the game they're ultimately playing. Yeah, 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 yeah. he plays the, the he re- basically reading the instruction booklet for yeah. uh, Super Pack while Joe Do- no while Justin, Justin Bailey, Bailey <laughs> like does physical workout. That's the training montage, and they do all of this. In the space of 15 minutes. Exactly. What in a regular 80s movie, this montage would be like a year long as far as that goes. So much training and so much put into it. Yeah, they did that all in 15 minutes. They didn't have a lot of time to deal with at this point in time. (laughs) And uh, in the end, Justin Bailey is able to play a video game. Exactly. He finally gets up the gusto. But come to find out, Dorfus was actually kidnapped by Dumb and Dumber, the uh, nephews of Jodon Baker. So they have him tied up in Jodon Baker's house for some reason. And gagged. Exactly. Because they don't want him yelling no, for and help. Yeah, so like they're sitting over him and watching cartoons. But then they're like, hey, we should go and check out what, what Jodon Baker is doing and if we can help him. Yep. So naturally they're going to go ahead and so naturally they're going to go ahead and leave their hostage all alone or so they think all alone to uh so they can go see if they can help their uncle which they I'm thinking I'm thinking not yeah, only man. did did the uncle uh beat uh both his wife and his daughter I'm thinking there was some molesting going on with the uh, Yeah, this is like Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, like, they They've they've been through some shit. The, the guys used probably used to be really good guys. Uh, now that they, they're just they don't have a father anymore. Their father's dead. That, that would that would also like explain the uh, sort of gender dysphoria Max experiences mm. while while dressed up as a woman. Oh man! But then isn't like he's just fucked up. It's like <laughs> not that he's actually transgender it's just he's fucked up and he yeah. doesn't know anything exactly he has issues god we could probably do a whole nother hour on just the psychological issues of this movie <laughs> but <laughs> so back to the story calls for help in the only way you could if you were gagged exactly by farting loudly exactly that is that is his main form of communication in this movie uh anything that needs to get done any laughs that need to happen uh, just just look to Dorfus to uh to fart. Yeah, let, got... let, let him do a fart and that fucking wakes up the drugged up uh, wife of, of Joe Don Baker, who of course just goes and immediately starts like dry humping him. Exactly. We thought she was on pain pills like, earlier. I think she might just be on like Lady Viagra because she wants to fuck everything. <laughs> and like like this sweaty, dirty that guy mm-hmm. is like, it, it's like Fabio is is like tied up in her in her couch. fucking living room, yep. on her couch, and uh, like again for a crazy drugged up cougar, she's still pretty hot. Oh yeah, definitely not bad at all. It's it's, it's a look that really does it for me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so like. So she starts fucking humping on him. Oh, yeah. And uh, he sort of uh, says, like, hey, if you untie me, I'll go away and then bring more dudes. Yeah, even to better bone you. than me. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you can and she's, it. like, fucking all over that shit. Oh, she yeah. just wants to get gangbang. She is so cock hungry. I mean, she They're is. Like, <laughs> she is this ready. is, like, again... Like, all of this just shows very, like, this family is very deeply psychologically troubled. Exactly. They actually, they made a sequel to this just about the family. It was called Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. (laughs) That's pretty much what happens to the entire family. It's just, it's a horrible time. Uh, So, no. Oh, God. So, yeah, um, Lady Macbeth, uh, Miss Horny John Baker, (laughs) Um, decides, uh, yeah, okay, I'll let you go, and you go get me somebody sexier, and we'll we'll do whatever. So Dorfus gets just have a fucking gang bang. You can fit three cocks in my ass. Exactly. She's gonna have all holes filled as soon as possible. <laughs> uh- <laughs> so we cut back to the arcade, and like they're playing Super Pack, mm-hmm. and this has got to be the longest game of super pack ever played oh yeah it lasts for like six minutes a full six minutes and yeah. like 
Yeah, and like they show them die all the time, but that apparently like they have a billion guys or something. It seems that way. Yeah, Justin Bailey is there. He's sweating. He's so nervous because he still hasn't got over his irrational fear of video games because the time he's still getting he's just getting triggered left and right. <laughs> so many and, triggers. Uh, and like like these machines were designed to fucking eat quarters or tokens or whatever but yeah, yeah they, like they play a game of super pack for six minutes and then all of a sudden king videos just goes eh, no fuck this pretty much that and like jonah baker is shocked and just appalled and is shouting and like who would have guessed a man who names himself king vidiot would be kind of flaky yep just a <laughs> bit of a dickhead <laughs> uh, so of course like J Justin Bailey wins uh, Joe Don Baker doesn't get what he wants and happy ending or so you would think you would think that this is the end of the movie no nope. <laughs> we have one plot line to to get back a dwarf has uh, promised somebody one... something yep yeah yeah we have one that that plot threat needs wrapping up. They go to the so, skeeziest hotel you could possibly oh imagine. Oh, God, this, scream, this scene is so fucking <laughs> creepy. It's like, like, okay, we're going to take you now to a hotel, and you are going to lose your virginity, man. Yeah. You're going to have the sex. Exactly. And he doesn't even know who he's doing it with. Exactly. He, he's, he's an innocent guy. I mean, Eugene, if he's nothing else, is the, is the star of the show. And yeah, he's just scared. He's like visibly scared. <laughs> and he's like, they get to the door and he's like, Won't you come in with me? To do what? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Do you want them to watch? You will have awkward first time sex? Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, that almost reminds me of my first time. But we'll go into that more later. Oh, uh, so, yeah, so like he goes in and yeah, it's Joe Don Baker's wife. Hooray! In lingerie. And uh, Eugene... In lingerie. He's ready to and, like, a man. Has a, yeah, and like, has a whip and everything. Oh, yeah. So Eugene... Uh, and that's, the, that's the end. Yeah, pretty much. They do a freeze frame of Dorfus and Justin Bailey walking off. And, uh, yeah... <laughs> that's uh that was joystick that was a terrible note to end in a movie on <laughs> but 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 ego guess what totally what? awesome video game oh hey! <laughs> uh, no i i oh, absolutely God. adore this movie there was there was it was perfect for me it really was. Uh, I loved watching it again. This has been my favorite of the three we watched so far, and I really did enjoy Demonic Toys or uh, Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys, except the third act. Fucking third act. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, like it's it's an okay watch, but I I I didn't find it like at all special. But I I didn't grow up in arcades, so or never even uh, very very rarely went into one. Yeah, see, that, and, was, uh, like, it, that, that was my childhood. This was like all before my time. Yeah, see, my entire childhood is all wrapped up in this movie for the most part. It was fart jokes. It was playing arcade machines and trying my damnedest to see tits. That was my entire childhood. Is That's all I cared about in life. And that's what this movie I, covered. You know, I've, I've heard worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like uh, like arcades for me like are pretty much fucking useless until Golden Axe, sort of that era. That's when fucking arcades started to yeah. matter. I guess I can understand where you're coming from. I mean, my first game that I ever played was Super. Uh, um, excuse me, a uh, Miss Pac Man. Uh, my father was actually very good at it and i literally have a picture if i can find it before um the editing gets through i'll actually pop it up here in the end of it it's me as a baby with my father holding me up playing mrs pac-man like actually looking like i'm playing it so yeah i absolutely adore arcade machines i've got an arcade stick 
uh, that I will eventually build my own main machine. Uh, this movie is just nostalgia on top of nostalgia. The bad eighties like, puns and the, the, the new, I mean, it's all perfect to me. I absolutely love it. So, yeah, I mean, Joe Don Baker is, is amazing in this movie. Oh, I, yeah. I have to say yeah. like, yeah, it's, it's, it's no Mitchell, but he's, he's still great in it. And, uh, John Grease. Uncle Rico is is pretty good as King Vidiot. Yeah, he's pretty entertaining to say the least. I mean, this and, is and just and it, like this, at least you get to see the worst Valley Go accent of all time. <laughs> see, this is the I think this is the first movie that I would actively at least tell our circle of friends you should watch this. I think this one, uh, although I I did enjoy Puppet Master vs. Demonic Toys. I don't think normal people would. <laughs> this, no, no, however, I guess you're right. They probably wouldn't enjoy this either, but at least there's tits. If Puppet Master vs. Demonic Toys had tits, I might be able to recommend it a bit more. Unfortunately, it didn't. It was made for sci-fi. Uh, this one has <laughs> all of the above. Um, yeah, I would definitely recommend this to uh, normies. Who I don't, don't know. I, I didn't even... I, it never even managed to get up to a chub for me, so I don't know if I can safely recommend it on the tits angle. I can understand that. But yeah. But, uh, you know, all this talk about tits, I think it's time for an intervention. <laughs> I cannot Which wait brings for us to next week's movie. Oh, man. This movie is a lifetime original film <laughs> which explores the dangers and family shattering horror. That is internet pornography. Internet porn. And how how it 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 can chop down a man in his prime mm -hmm. because of of porn addiction. Exactly. And it's going to show you why you should not view porn. Uh, it makes you a horrible person. Spoiler. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it fucking makes you a zombie spoiler <laughs> yeah it definitely anyway does. we're gonna get into that next week uh so yeah i mean joysticks it's an okay stupid movie it's it's not anything spectacularly bad like puppet master versus demonic toys it's not something that's horrible like star babe it's just a stupid nice movie you can pop it in with your friends if you're drinking you know, it's it's not something. It's it probably works better in a crowd. Yeah, I would definitely suggest for most people, uh, you get a few people together, definitely have some alcohol involved, and uh, it, it's really a good time, especially if you have any type of history with uh, arcades. I mean, this will bring back yeah, sort all, of that era of technology and shit. Exactly, a lot of nostalgia for me, as I said, because I got into it early. Um, so yeah, tomorrow we've got cyber seduction. His Secret Life. <laughs> a Lifetime original movie. Oh. I forgot to say the title. I'm sorry. Oh, that's, all, that's quite all right. I, I couldn't uh, remember yeah. what I was, I was feeling for time while I was pulling it up. And make sure, after you get through listening to this and listen to all of our other fine episodes, check out the other podcasts on this feed. There's some good damn podcasts. There's The Terminal Fuck Up Hour with Gregor Allen. No, he goes by Gregor Sexy Allen. Idiot Boy. Exactly. With Chris Bolchi and LMT, the funniest guys that I know personally. Um, as well. They're pretty it, good. They're it, very good. They're really good. If you want to have a good laugh, that is one of the best podcasts I can recommend. And if you're into maybe more recent movies, um, you can join me on another podcast, a Shattered Movie Podcast. Uh, that's very original. Now that I say it out loud, that just sounds hard. Yeah, yeah myself and Ben Spike, the uh, really just everybody hates him on the internet. So come and laugh at him and laugh with <laughs> me on uh, over at a Shattered uh, Media Podcast. Uh, but once again, thanks so much for coming by, listening again. We look forward to coming back next week. And, oh, it's going to be a good one, I think, <laughs> Eagle. It's going to be very beautiful. It's going to be. But until then, you got to listen to on the count of three one two three totally totally awesome, awesome video game, game. That, was, that was that was the most out of sync 
of double vocals ever. Yeah, well, I forgive you. You're in Iceland. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> soul again, gonna see my name and lights, laid with my joystick, wiggle left, jerk it right, something everything inside, shoot fast, shoot straight, video to the mind. Let me have a 